Oops. Hey everyone, welcome to the Speakeasy Brewer. I'm Austin. Today we are working on our yeast starter for tomorrow's beer. Tomorrow we're going to be brewing uh, an amber ale. We're going to call it the Messy Pig and uh, we are doing it as a shout out and a thank you to Decipher. Um, D-C-Y-F-E-R. Okay, go to his channel, check him out. He does uh, amazing music. He's a DJ, so uh, go to his channel follow it and listen. It's great. I like to listen to his stuff while I'm uh, doing cleaning up or when I'm cleaning up all my beer stuff after brew day, uh, that kind of thing. And also Nico check as well. Uh, both of those guys are great DJs and they're fun to listen to. So if you're looking for something new, go check those guys out. But tomorrow we are brewing Decipher's uh, beer and he decided he wanted to call it the Messy Pig and it's an amber ale and it's going to be uh, somewhat of a copy of the Red Stripe Ale. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say ale. It's Red Stripe Jamaican Lager. Um, so he said that was his favorite beer. I don't have room for two lagers at the moment. So we're going to do uh, a beer or an ale that's as close as we could possibly get it to being a lager without being a lager. Okay, And that's all dependent on the yeast. So speaking of yeast, that's what we're working on today. Today we're doing a yeast starter. It's a super simple process. This probably won't be that long of a stream, uh, but it's an important process in uh, when it comes to brewing beer. Do you need to do it is a question I normally get, and the answer is no, you don't have to do it. Um, I recommend that you do it. It doesn't take very long. It takes 20 minutes to actually get the yeast starter ready to go. And then, you know, if you do it the day before your brew day, um, then you're, you're golden. You're good to go. Even if it's a 14 hour ferment, um, then you're going to have extra yeast that you can use in your beer. Uh, having a yeast starter will basically double your yeast, um, cells. And the benefit to having more yeast cells is it causes the fermentation to be more efficient. Um, and it just does a better job at kind of cleaning up all the extra sugars and things like that. So, um, it's a much better way to go, and also if you have a more alcoholic or a higher uh, alcohol by volume beer that you're trying to create, um, obviously you need to find the yeast that works best for um, dealing with higher alcohol content, um, but the more yeast you have, the better. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So there's a few things that you need, you don't necessarily need them, but I highly recommend it. Um, I should go find the links for these. Um, but you can buy an Erlenmeyer flask. This is a 1,000 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, the reason I use an Erlenmeyer flask is, yes, it's a little bit of chemistry, but this piece of glass right here um, can withstand crazy temperature changes because that's what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to be creating a yeast starter, which requires us to create like a mini beer or a mini wort is what it is. And um, we're going to take that beer, or that wort, and it's going to be hot. It's going to be boiling for 10 minutes. We're going to stick it in the jar and we're going to cool it down with cold water as quickly as we can. So the temperature change is pretty drastic. Um, normal glass, it will shatter your glass. If you haven't tried it before, I don't recommend it. But um, if you use regular glass, uh, it will shatter with the temperature changes. Um, so Erlenmeyer flask is a must if you're going to be using one of these. Um, the next thing that you need is a stir plate. 
okay? Um, this is something I got online too. I'll go find the links for you guys and I'll put it on my Discord. So um, if you're new here and you are interested in the whole beer brewing process and you wanna try it yourself, um, follow me on the Discord channel. Let's talk, let's chat beer. Um, and I will give you all my recipes that I use for every beer that I make. And you're welcome to copy them. If you have any questions, I'd love to turn it into a forum that we can talk about anything beer, whether it's drinking beer, recommending beer, um, brewing beer, anything, or cocktails too, for that matter. In fact, I'm getting ready to have myself a little bit of a whiskey because, well, it's the afternoon and it's a beautiful day here. So, and I'm out of beer right now, at least cold beer. And beer needs to be drank cold, unless you're in Europe. They don't drink it cold oftentimes, depending on where you go. Anyways, that's enough of that. But uh, the stir plate will come with a, um, a power cord or a power adapter um, and this little box. On the inside, there's another magnet and you have a little pill magnet thingy. It's a stir pill. I don't even know what you would call it, but uh, you need these things. And what you're going to do is you're going to stick this pill inside the, or the stirrer, stirrer, stirrer. You're going to stick it inside the Erlenmeyer flask and then you're going to center the flask right on top of this and then you're going to turn this on and what that does is it helps to oxygenate and aerate the the wort and the yeast so yeast needs a few things to survive one it needs oxygen and two it needs sugar okay and so that's what we're doing um so once you have those those items um you'll also need obviously your yeast um, this is what you are going to use if you're going to be making a yeast starter is some DME, okay? It's, it's just a powder. Um, DME stands for dry malt extract. So when I brew a beer or whenever you brew a beer and you create the, like that sweet tea, which we call wort, okay? That is dry. That's basically malt, malted water sweet it's a, like a sweet tea okay what they what companies have done is taken it and distilled it down and dehydrated it into a powder so all we're doing is taking this powder uh we're going to take a half cup i don't know what it is in europe so if you're in, in europe you're going to have to find some conversion calculator because i'm just an american we only use you know american measurements um that the rest of the world doesn't use um so one or a half cup of this of dry malt extract, and it doesn't matter what you use, dark, light, whatever. I'm using golden light dry malt extract today. And then you're gonna mix that in with two cups of water, okay? You're gonna bring it to a boil. You're going to uh, let it boil for 10 minutes, and that's more to like pasteurize it and clean it and make sure there's nothing living in there that shouldn't be living in there. And then we're gonna transfer that wort to the Erlenmeyer flask. We're gonna cool it down, add the yeast, and, um, and then we're gonna let it get on its way. Um, the other thing is star sand. Okay, if you've watched any of my videos before or any of my streams, I always talk about the most important things with brewing beer. It's sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Um, and you wanna make sure that whatever you are sanitizing, whether it be a fermenter or uh, the flask, Erlenmeyer flask, or whatever it is, make sure that you have cleaned it as well. Um, for anything that's gonna to be touching beer, you don't want to use Dawn dish soap or anything like that. You can get an oxidizing agent like uh, PBW, um, and that is an amazing cleaner. That's gonna get all that nasty, caked, uh, cakey like gunk that's left over from fermentation or anything else. It just really cleans that off really nicely. You rinse it off and then you sanitize it before it's gonna to touch any cold beer because. You don't want any of that bacteria or wild yeast floating around touching that beer because it could totally change the outcome of the beer. So star sand is a must. And um, I've got a bucket right here of about three gallons of hot water that I've already put some star sand in. And we're gonna be using that for sanitizing everything. So we're gonna sanitize the flask, the Erlenmeyer flask. We're gonna sanitize the stir pill thingy majig. And we're also going to, because I'm very, um, picky and OCD and I'm kind of like a clean freak, but uh, we're going to cover the top of the Erlenmeyer flask with some um, aluminum foil. I sanitize that as well. And then when it comes to the yeast, 
I sanitize that entire package. And if I'm going to use um, scissors that to cut open that package, if it doesn't have like an easy tear, um, it's really important that you sanitize the scissors. Again, you probably don't have to sanitize all the stuff, but if you want to make sure that your beer is absolutely safe from wild yeast or bacteria, sanitize everything. Over sanitizing is a good thing. So um, there's that. So today, the yeast that we're going to be using is a Y yeast, British Ale to 1335. I can't, I can try and show you, but I don't know how clear it's going to come out. But anyways, uh, Y yeast is a great, they, uh, it's a great uh, company. Um, there's other brands like White Labs and Imperial Yeast. I really like Imperial Yeast a lot. Usually uh, you get more yeast cells in um, their packages versus Y yeast. That being said, it's not that big of a difference. I mean, I shouldn't say that. It is a big difference, but what we get with Y yeast is 100 billion cells, and then Imperial Yeast might come with 200 billion cells. And honestly, both companies are good. I would go either way. I do go either way. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, the most important thing is, regardless of whatever one you're using, if you really want to have a better fermentation, a more efficient fermentation, um, just do a yeast starter. That way, whether you get 100 billion cells or 200 billion cells in a package, you could double that amount and then throw that in your beer. Um, so these, the Y yeast has a special uh, um, packaging that they use, and it's called a smack pack. Okay, so inside we have wort. So today, remember I told you we're making our small batch of beer. Well, it's not beer yet. It can't be beer without it ferment, uh, going through the fermentation process. So what we have is that sweet tea, which is called wort, W-O-R-T. It's spelled, uh, it's pronounced wort, okay? So they basically have what we have already um, that we're gonna be producing today, okay? So there's a little bit of wort in here and then there's this little tiny, um, like, a little less than a fist size um, package of yeast and it's all sealed up. And what you do is you put it right in the corner and you smack it, which I just did. And what that does is it releases the yeast into the um, wort that's in there. Um, you wanna make sure you get it all out, make sure it's flat. Okay, cool. Sometimes I like to shake it up a little bit, make sure it all gets in there and while we're making our mini wort, uh, the yeast in here is gonna go ahead and start warming up. Um, so what you might see during this time, even though it's gonna be like 10 minutes or so, uh, this was just in the fridge. Um, if you're not gonna use it right away, put it in the fridge, it's, uh, it's important, it helps keep the yeast alive. Um, I mean, they'll be alive anyways, but it's just better for long-term keeping. If, if it's just one day, it's not that big of a deal, but you wanna refrigerate it as much as possible. Um, but you'll see as it heats up, it might start to inflate a little bit. It's just because the yeast is gonna start eating that wort and the sugars inside of here, and it's gonna start filling out, um, filling the bag with um, CO2. Most likely that won't happen too much before we put this in, but there's a small chance of that. So anyways, smack pack, it's kind of nice, but this is the yeast we're doing uh, using today. Um, and let me see, I have it written down here. Give me one second. All right, so with the Messy Pig, um, the yeast that we're using, like I said, Y yeast, British Ale 2, which is uh, number 1335, so 1335. Um, it's a British ale profile with good flocculation and malty flavor characteristics, and it will finish crisp, clean, and fairly dry. So the reason I wanted to use this um, particular brand is because I wanted it to taste as much as I possibly could get it to taste like a lager, okay? Lagers are crisp, lagers are dry, lagers are clean, and um, like it said, it has high flocculation. So that's an important vocab word here, okay? There's two words. You have attenuation and flocculation. Um, so flocculation is basically the yeast's ability to fall out after fermentation. So if you've seen any of my videos, before where I actually videotaped um, the fermenter where it's got that that layer of bubbles and, and stuff. That's called uh, croisin. And that is just like the byproducts. It's CO2, it's even dead yeast cells and some other junk that's in there and some of the protein that's kind of getting stuck um, to uh, 
you know, the CO2 bubbles and such, it's all floating on the top of the beer. Okay. Now flocculation means that all that crap that's floating on the top of the beer, which looks nasty, um, once the fermentation is done, then all of that falls out. And what that does is it just sinks to the bottom of the beer. Um, and then it just stays put down below and that helps to clean the beer. So the higher the flocculation, the cleaner um, your beer will be after fermentation, okay? And then attenuation is basically, um, that's talking about the efficiency of fermentation you're gonna get from a specific yeast, okay? So um, let's see, this one, what did I say? I don't know if I actually wrote it down. Okay, it doesn't necessarily give me a percentage here, but um, it's got high, uh, I believe it had medium to high attenuation. So most likely it's going to be between 72 to 78% attenuation, and that's just the efficiency, okay? And that just means that the amount of sugar that's going to be left in the wort after fermentation is going to be a lot less. If it was a, um, a lower percentage, like... Um, uh, like, you know, 50 or whatever, that means there's still unfermented sugars in the beer. So that means the beer is going to be really sweet and there's going to be less alcohol. The higher that percentage of attenuation, the, the less sugar there will be left over in the beer, which means that there'll be more alcohol in the beer. Okay. So those are some things to think about when you're buying yeast. Um, yes. Okay, cool. And then the other thing, and I don't necessarily need to say all of this now, but just in case you're new to this channel and you're new to beer brewing, um, one thing that is an absolute must is when you ferment a beer, take note of what temperature that yeast needs to ferment at. Okay, so every single yeast strain, there's hundreds, maybe even thousands of yeast strains. I'm sure there's thousands. If there's not thousands, I'd be surprised. Okay, but there are, are, there are thousands of yeast strains and each strain will cause there to be certain flavors and profiles and cleanliness and attenuation and blah, 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 blah. There's like endless profiles, okay? Each yeast requires a very specific temperature for fermentation. So a lager, for example, needs to have, you know, a colder temperature in order to ferment, and it, therefore it takes a longer time to ferment, depending on the process you use. You can get it down to seven days um, if you pressure ferment it, uh, which I don't know how to do yet, but I might try that at some point in time. And then the other thing is um, sometimes the yeast wants to work out or ferment at a higher temperature. And that's normally what you'll get with an ale yeast. It's right around room temperature between like 62 and I don't know, I've seen high as 80, 85 or something like that. And the temperature range is, it, it can fluctuate. So the hotter it is, it might put off, or the warmer the fermentation, the, the different flavors you'll get from that and if versus of whether it's cold. And then once it's done fermenting, you also wanna let it um, have what we call a diacetyl rest. So, um, all that means is that once it's done fermenting, if you let it sit for like a week or so, um, it's helpful for the yeast to go back and kind of clean things up. It'll give it a cleaner flavor if you let the yeast sit on it a little bit longer. Um, might be a little bit different on a commercial scale, uh, just because you have more beer, which increases the amount of pressure on the yeast, which could give your beer a yeasty flavor. Um, but for homebrew, when you're doing five gallons at a time, it's not that big of a deal. You won't, you shouldn't get that yeasty flavor. So anyways, all the stuff that you can know about yeast. Uh, by the way, I did see one uh, viewer. So thanks for jumping on and saying, well, not even saying hi, but following and wa watching. I think you're a follower. I don't know. But uh, thanks for jumping on and watching. Uh, today we're making a yeast starter for a beer we're brewing tomorrow. So if you're free tomorrow, we're brewing a beer. Unfortunately, I have to do it first thing in the morning because tomorrow's crazy for me. So I'm going to be starting at 6 a.m. Mountain Standard Time uh, because I'm in Utah and um, it's going to be about four and a half hour stream. So jump in whenever you want. Uh, but tomorrow's going to be pretty fun. We're going to be brewing the beer and you get to see the whole process and then you'll get to see um, what we're doing today get used, which is going to be at the very end of the brew. So anyways, let's get going with this. Okay. So I've already got the sanitizer all ready to go. I already put two cups of water. Um, I could have been heating this up. Shoot, more efficiency, okay? Um, so I've got two cups of water in here uh, in this pot, and I'm just going to heat it up. Uh, we want it to uh, come to a boil, 
and then we're going to add the DME to it, okay? And DME, again, is dry malt extract. That is the sugary, sweet wort that's been dehydrated to be just a sugary, sweet powder, okay? That's all we're doing, is we're just creating a mini beer. I'm trying to think of what else I can do to, again, it's all about efficiency. Um, I normally use a bucket to cool my beer so I don't waste a lot of water. The unfortunate thing is that bucket was used for something nasty when we cleaned the house recently. I don't know what's in there, so I'm not going to use that. Even though it's not going to touch the beer, again, I'm kind of a clean freak, and I get a little nervous when uh, I start touching things that are dirty and I've got, I'm going to be dealing with beer. Okay, I want my beer to turn out good because it's a pain in the hiney. So like go buy all the beer ingredients, spend a whole day and a half uh, cleaning, preparing, brewing, and then you let it sit for three weeks and then the beer is ruined because you happen to be lazy on some aspect of cleanliness. And then that yeast gets in there, that wild yeast or that bacteria gets in there and just ruins your beer. Uh, I speak from experience. I had it happen once and it was extremely depressing. So um, it... It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So if you homebrew, it's going to happen at least once. And if it doesn't happen once, you are lucky. And if I can tell you anything that will prevent you from ruining any beer, sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. Sanitize everything that's going to touch your cold beer, okay? Your wort, anything. Um, just, if you do that, you are already ahead of the game. And if you can learn from my mistakes, I make a lot, but if you can learn from my mistakes, you're going to be well off. Okay. So we're heating this bad boy up. I'm going to go ahead and get those two cups of DME out. The great thing about this stuff is it's delicious. Um, but if you spill it anywhere, it is super sticky. Okay. So just be cautious with that when you're when you're working on your uh, yeast starter. It's going to stick everywhere, especially once your water's boiling. Pour it in really fast because if you don't, it's just going to like create this crusted layer. It's it's bizarre. So I'm going to get this all ready to go. Two cups of water does not take very long to start heating up. And honestly. If you do a little more than half a cup, not a big deal. If you do less than half a cup, not a big deal. Um, we're just giving food. So you can see right here, this is the Austin version of measurement, um, which is, I don't care how accurate it is, unless I'm putting like, you know, minerals into my water for the beer, okay? That's the only time I'm gonna be, you know, very accurate. Um, but you know, the more sugar, the better. The yeast are gonna be happy. They're gonna go to town. It could lead to a boil over. So, when I, not a boil over, blow, blow over, I don't know. Um, but there was one time I made a yeast starter, and I think I put too much sugar in it. And I had a very aggressive yeast, which made a very good beer. Uh, but that's just besides the point. So what I did was I stuck this on the stir plate, I let it sit. The next morning I walked out, and it was freaking volcano everywhere. It was all over the counter. There was ooze bubbles and crap everywhere. So um, just be aware that if you do put more sugar in it, you might have a more aggressive fermentation, which means you might have a blowover. So one thing that I do, because this thing's got a bunch of little tiny screws and stuff like that and tiny little crevices for that crap to get in, it's a pain in the ass to clean, but it will. you can do it. But you can also just put a layer of saran wrap around it and then that way, if it does blow over the sides, um, it won't get on, on the, any of the small things, and the small crevices and stuff. Uh, last time I had that happen, I had to like get a toothbrush and so it was a pain. So anyways, um, let's see here. Oh, I forgot to say this too. So um, another thing when you're brewing your own beer and when you create a recipe, be flexible. If you create, uh, oh, hold on. Hold the phone. We got some boiling action going on here. Hot, 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 hot. 
Give me one second while I work this. You also might want to get a whisk, and, and once you pour it in, you're going to want to whisk it because it does clump up. And it can also um, burn to the bottom of the pond. Uh, pond. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Hot. Also, when it's really, really hot water, so it can boil over just because it's really, really sugary. So um, it's best on a gas stove because then you can turn the heat down. You can also blow on it. I, I wish I just was showing you this right now, but um, let me see. I got to find a little plate or something. Let me just bring you with me real fast just so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, but you can kind of see that it's really bubbly. So a second ago, it kind of came up to the very, very top of that pot. So um, if you were watching it, uh, you also would have been having a pucker factor moment because um, when that stuff boils over, it makes a mess. And it can happen with your yeast starter or even your beer. So the best thing to do is just turn down the heat uh, blow on it a little bit. Um, sometimes even just turning off the heat when you add it and then turn the heat back on, that helps too. Um, those are just a few tips of the trade. Now, timer's being set to 10 minutes. And we're going to let it boil for that 10 minutes. Again, this is just for cleaning it. Or not cleaning it, but like pasteurizing it killing off any wild yeast or bacteria or anything that could be in there. Okay, so 10 minutes and we'll be ready to go. Um, this thing, I'm sticking it in the star sand. I'm just gonna let it go ahead and get going. Um, the other thing too is when you make star sand on yeast starter day, so like today, uh, you can save water and sanita uh, sanitation, uh, like uh, sanitation, water. Gosh, I can't even talk right now. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but save it. It's not bad. It'll last for a day or so. And so you can just reuse it tomorrow. You don't have to like use the sanitizing solution and the water one day, dump it out and make a new one the next day. You can if you want to, but honestly, it's okay. Um, and when you also, you got to get the right measurement. So you can see it's kind of cloudy and, and milky almost in color. That's good. That's normal. So Oops, sorry if I'm making you sick for anybody who's watching right now. But that's normal, okay? So that's uh, in there. I'm going to get a little bowl for some sanitizing solution for this stir thing. Uh, I don't even know what to call it. Stir plate? No, it's not a stir plate. A stirrer. Stirrer. No, what to call it by now. Um, another thing, which I will try and do live one of these days, because I have to figure it out, okay, um, is harvesting the yeast, okay? So when you're done fermenting a beer, there's a whole bunch of yeast on the bottom of that beer that you can use again, um, and you want to clean it and then uh, harvest it by putting it in little tiny jars, and you could just stick it in the fridge and reuse it again. Um, so there's that. So I'm going to try and learn how to do that as well, because... Um, right now what I'm doing is I'm trying a whole bunch of different recipes and what I'd like to do is try one recipe using a whole bunch of different yeast and then I'm going to try the same recipe but using different hops, that kind of thing. Um, but I would like to reuse some of the yeast that I do to save a little bit of money. You get a little pack of yeast like that and it's about 20 bucks almost. Uh, so it's not too bad but um, uh, it can get expensive depending on how often you brew. Like right now I'm brewing once every two weeks. And uh, so it's, it's starting to get a little spendy, but it's all good. Uh, it's, if it's fun for you guys, it's fun for me. Well, it's fun for me, and hopefully it's fun for you guys. I enjoy it every day. So um, there's that. So, okay. Um, now it's time for me to have a wee bit of whiskey. Got my awesome tumbler cup. And let's see, what whiskey will I have? Okay, no laughing, but I think I'm gonna have a little bit of Jameson. 
I don't really have a whole lot of whiskey. That's one thing I do need to get more of is um, just a bigger variety of whiskeys. Um, whoo, that is that is a strong, strong whiskey. I, I have a Japanese whiskey as well. And that Japanese whiskey is really smooth. Uh, let's see if I can remember the name of it. If you haven't had Japanese whiskey, you got to get some. Hatozaki. Hatozaki. Okay. It's really great. It's so smooth. It's so clean. You could just enjoy it without adding any sugar. Not sugar cubes. Gosh. Ice cubes. Not sugar cubes. Ice cubes. Trust me. I know how to drink whiskey. Honestly, I only drink it straight just because that's just the way I do things. Mmm. 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 And whiskey just, it feels so good on a cold day. It's not a cold day, but it's always good on a cold day. Okay, we got seven minutes left. Um, okay. Okay, so I see one person's watching. Um, do you have any questions about anything that's going on today? Holler at me, let me know, um, and I'll try to answer your question. I've only been doing this for like three years, so if I can do root beer, you can do it. And honestly, after three years, um, if you're really, really into it and you get the right equipment, you can make some amazing beer. Um, I made an IPA three months ago and it was one of the best beers I've ever made and um, I kegged it that was my first beer I ever kegged which was interesting it was a blast but and when I say it was a blast I mean it <laughs> sprayed everywhere uh, I didn't do the pressurization correctly but the beer turned out great and uh, I brought it to a block party in our neighborhood and we drained that sucker in one day so it was really really good so I feel like that's the most important thing is one, you, you create your own beer that's really, really good. And when people say, I'd buy this beer, then you've made it. You've made it as a home brewer. Well, you make it as a home brewer if you make your own beer, but you know, it is what it is. Also, uh, for those of you who are watching or for those of you who will watch later, cheers to you. Um, hopefully you have a nice, cool beverage in your hand while you watch this. I know this, there's not a whole lot going on today. Tomorrow is Big Brew Day, so um, we got five minutes to dance for you. But I, I don't, I have what man dance moves and not very good dancing. Although I did get a whole bar to dance one time uh, because I, I, I did suck that bad. Oh, I forgot about this. This needs to get sanitized. Oh, also. So when you do brew beer, okay, or, or well, when you're sanitizing your fermenter or your Erlenmeyer flask, um, or when you're dealing with sanitation in general, follow the directions, okay? It is important that you don't do too much star sand because star sand, or any sanitizer, but star sand is a, is a very high acid um, cleaner or sanitizer. It could kill your yeast, so you don't want too much. Okay, but if you follow the directions and you do um, the right amount of um, star sand, then the parts per million are it's perfect, and it won't it doesn't hurt your health and it doesn't hurt the health of the yeast at all. Um, I'm gonna try and do this real quickly. It's okay if there's um, some bubbles or yeast or not yeast uh, bubbles or star sand that's still left in the Erlenmeyer flask or your fermenter. Okay, it is totally fine. Um, foam is good. So I've got a little bit in there. It's still floating around. I'm going to try and get as much as I can out. I don't want more in there because, well, I, I, I'm picky that way. Um, so I got it all out, but there's still a little bit of, you know, bubbling in there. That's okay. Um, foam is good. And that'll just kind of dissipate over time. Um, but it won't hurt your yeast and it won't hurt you. So just a heads up. Um, this stuff is pretty intense though. And they do say don't put it on wood surfaces in your kitchen. Like I've got wooden cab, uh, countertops. Don't put it on the wooden countertops. Don't put it on anything really that's going to be touching food because um, it can um, be detrimental to your food. 
But anyways, I'm gonna let that sit there for a little bit. Also, it's one thing that I, uh, you know, I haven't quite figured out what I'm, what I think on this whole thing, but I do wash my hands a lot or rinse them off a lot when I'm dealing with the star sand. Um, if you do too much star sand, it can actually potentially give you a burn. So you might want to just watch that. Uh, maybe using kitchen gloves or something like that might be helpful. I haven't quite gotten there yet because most kitchen gloves are tiny for tiny hands. So uh, it doesn't really help me out that much. But anyways, uh, one of my buddies, he brews beer and he has to wear gloves and wash his hands off often because it was actually eating some of his skin. Uh, when I say eating, it was just burning it. So do watch out for chemical burns. Follow the directions. Don't drink it. Don't swallow it. Don't sniff it. Simple rules. But this, this you can drink. Um, again, if you're new here and you like what you see, I know today is not the most exciting thing ever, but um, if you like what you see and you're interested in the process of brewing beer, uh, eventually we're going to work on cocktails and try different cocktails and do beer reviews and things like that. We're just kind of getting things going. Um, if you like what you see here, make sure to follow and and set up notifications for my channel. We also have a Discord link and a YouTube link on my channel page. Um, YouTube is just where I'm exporting all the videos, just so if you miss it before it, can, it expires on Twitch, you can just go to the YouTube channel, find it there, and watch it there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then the Discord server is just for our community of people here on Twitch just talking about all things beer. Basically, we talk about all sorts of stuff, but uh, I will give you updates on uh, schedule changes, um, beers that we're doing, and if you have any questions about the brewing process uh, or anything, um, make sure to join that server and we will chat about all that stuff. Um, also, if you are interested in helping me choose the next beer that I'm gonna brew, make sure if you like what you see, tell your friends about this channel, have them go and follow me, and once they follow me and jump in on the chat and get engaged a little bit, um, let me know in a whisper uh, who you've sent over my way to, to follow my channel, and I'll put you on a spreadsheet, and then I'll have you, I'll connect with you when it comes time for brewing the beer that we're going to be working on. So stay tuned, follow, get your buddies to follow. All that fun stuff. Okay, so now is the fun part. Okay, so we got our pot of water. Water, gosh, shoot, I just can't talk right now. When you're dealing with hot, uh, hot things, I highly recommend that you use your bare hands. Yes, I just did that. Okay, so here is the beautiful wort. Okay, this is a small version of beer. Uh, let's see if I can get better lighting on that. Okay, anyways, so you can see it's kind of light. It's kind of golden um, It's very sweet um, So that's what we're gonna be producing tomorrow on a much larger scale um, Star sand is going out And Gosh, I need three hands probably Okay, so I'm going to hold this for a second. I need to come up with a more efficient way of doing things because it's kind of silly. I'm putting on my bang hands so I can hold the Erlenmeyer flask while I pour just because it is hot and you don't want to touch hot stuff because, well, you know, because you've all been burned before. I try not to touch the, the neck of the Erlenmeyer flask too because the heat will kill the yeast. So if you pour it in very carefully, let's make sure all the yeast star sand is out. Um, if you pour very carefully, then you can get it in there without touching the edges. See it. Requires patience. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I just want to drink it now.
Sweet. All right, so now you can see the actual color of it. It's beautiful. So now I'm just gonna turn on the cold water. Kind of smells like um, like burnt bread or something like that. And we're just gonna mix it up, okay? Again, I normally don't like to waste this much water, but what you're trying to do is get the glass nice and cold and you're mixing the wort around to touch all the cold surfaces as much as you possibly can. And that, and if you thin it out by mixing it around like this, it'll cool a little bit faster. It takes about like five, six minutes or so of you doing this. Um, the whole point is just to really get it down to room temperature uh, for the yeast to, you know, eat. All we're trying to do is multiply the yeast. This yeast is not going to change the flavor or anything of your beer. This is just to multiply the amount of yeast that you have so that when you do ferment your beer, it is uh, more efficient fermentation. Another thing we're doing as we're doing this is we're actually introducing um, a little bit of oxygen to the wort. Again, remember with yeast, needs oxygen and sugar to survive. this bare hand off now because it's cool enough. At least the glass is cool enough. And again, you don't want to get water or anything on the inside of this Erlenmeyer flask now that it's sanitized on the inside. And it's also uh, the beer is sanitized or the wort sanitized. So you just got to be, just be cautious. Again, it's just a lot of work to get beer and um, and such a bummer when it gets ruined. All right, I'm gonna test it real quick just to see. You kind of want it to be just warm to the touch. Be a little too warm still. At least less than 80 degrees is what you want. Um, if it's more than 80 degrees, you could potentially kill your ease. Also, quick shout out to uh, Curdy the Plant. I actually met him today. He helped me uh, get the right stuff for my computer so I could stream uh, more clearly um, tomorrow in the garage. So I got rid of my internet booster, so I went ahead and got straight up ethernet cable and um, adapter for my laptop. So hopefully that solves all my internet woes my technology woes and tomorrow's gonna be a nice beautiful streaming day we're gonna have fun it's gonna be good it's gonna be early but i guess for you guys in europe who, who watch it won't be early it'll be more like you'll probably be finishing up work but if you're free jump on all right so that seems cool enough now comes the um Yeast. I should have sanitized the scissors a little bit sooner. No, so even with the um, even with the easy tear packet, I'll still just cut off a corner because it helps me to um, it helps me to have a little more control when pouring. And when I pour it, it's, ooh, ooh, it's kind of sulfury, but that's okay. It's, again, it's not going to ruin my beer. It's just one of the byproducts. Okay, so um, when I pour it in, it's going to make it look all milky. But again, this is normal. Oh, heavens, to, for heaven's sake. 
Okay. Pour it nice and slow. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, you can see it's starting to get a little cloudy. Make sure you get all, almost all of it out if you can. Right on. Okay, we got it all. So you can see already that it's now quite milky. So the yeast has gotten into the beer. Swirl it in a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the stir pill thingy in. Honestly, I don't think this is gonna be a really uh, aggressive yeast, so I probably won't put a layer of um, saran wrap underneath this thing. All year round so you can see what's up. All right, so now down below, I'm looking to find the uh, magnet and I'm just gonna move it to the center. And Ooh. stir plate together. You don't need a whole lot of uh, aluminum foil, just enough to cover the top. Uh, you don't even need to put like a rubber band around it. Just put it right around the top and kind of seal it as much as you can. Again, one thing is I go overboard on cleanliness, but all, all you have to have is a beer fail once and you're going to do all the precautions. Okay, so it's all sanitized now. Put it over the top and this allows a little bit of air to escape and then I just kind of go around the rim rim job and then um, yeah that's all I do and I'm gonna turn it on and maybe I'll wait and bring you over so you can see what's going on because when you turn the um, stir plate on there is a small little bit of nuance with it you don't want it to be super um, here, let's just I'm gonna bring you over. Hold on. Sorry if I make you sick because of my amateur abilities here for streaming. Okay, so um, you can kind of get a good look at what I did around it, um, the rim. So I kind of flattened it out a little bit and just crumpled it around the, the top. It allows a little bit of air to get out. Um, but down here, let's see if you can actually see it. Uh, but I know the shadows are pretty bad. The, the stir, the actual funnel or um, center part of the, I guess the whirlpool that we're trying to create will be in the darkness. So I'll hopefully be able to get it. So I'm turning it up slowly but surely. I can hear it's rotating. And let me see if you can see it. Okay, yeah, you can see it. All right, so there you are. So that's a little more than I want in terms of a, an actual whirlpool. So I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. That's a, too much. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get it to be a whirlpool just enough to where there's a dip in the fluid, okay? So I'm gonna bring it back just a tad. We're almost there. Okay, cool. So hopefully you can see that. So right there, that's as much as you need. Okay, and the whole point of that is just to add a little bit of extra oxygenation and it kind of causes the yeast to really work through all of that work. Um, so in about, I'd say two to three hours, this thing's gonna start getting active and you'll see some bubbling happening and sometimes it goes all the way up to the neck of the Erlenmeyer flask, not a big deal. If it's not a huge mess most of the time, but every once in a while it will kind of um, not boil over, but blow over the edge and make a mess, but um, shouldn't get to that today. Um, once it's actually done fermenting, then the, like I said, the yeast will kind of fall out. And so tomorrow when it comes time for yeast, I'll show you guys on the stream what it looks like. You'll see a whole layer of yeast down at the bottom and all the beer that's been eaten um, or all the sugars that have been eaten up, the leftover at that point will be beer, uh, will be at the top. Um, and we'll just kind of mix it all together and throw it in the fermenter. Um, if you're really picky, which I haven't quite gotten to that, this level of pickiness, which is surprising, you can also um, just take that top layer of beer off 
uh, so it doesn't, you know, interfere with, a, with whatever beer you have going uh, or fermenting. So anyways, all a bunch of tips and tricks of the trade, that kind of thing. So um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. It's a super simple day, but it, um, but it is important for um, brew day. So with that being said, let me fix this so I could say my farewells. So tomorrow, 6 a.m. Mountain Standard Time is brew day. Not looking forward to it being an early morning, but it, it's the only time I got. So tomorrow we are brewing the Messy Pig for Decipher, the Amber Ale. Uh, kind of like a makeshift lager just because. So anyways, you guys are awesome. This channel is the way it is because of you. So please get engaged, ask questions, jump on. Um, tomorrow is going to be a big day for us. So, um, and again, if you haven't uh, checked out Decipher, check out Decipher and Nico Check. Both of those guys are great DJs. You can check them out um, whenever. Um, but yeah. Uh, cheers to Decipher. Cheers to you all for making this channel uh, what it is. And as I always like to say, be adventurous, stay thirsty, speak easy. I'll see you all tomorrow.